points. Um, you guys looked a, a little bit loose defensively, especially in the first half. But do you feel like you, you guys as a team kind of locked in and, and at the most critical juncture of the game uh, really started playing some good defense? Oh, yeah. They was, they were shooting like 11 for 16, so we had to lock in down the stretch for sure. We couldn't keep trading baskets. This game was going to get out of hand, so we had to get stops at the end. So we just locked in. Evan, what, what took so long for you guys to get going tonight, and what were some of those conversations like as you guys were you know, struggling a little bit in the uh, To be honest, I don't know. Uh, we just didn't have it defensively. You know, they, you know, they're not an easy team to guard. They're a hard team to guard. You know, they play together. They're experienced. So, I mean, they're returning, returning eight of their nine guys from last year. So, they just, you know, they're really good offensively. And, you know, we just have to lock in. Eli, uh, just on that, uh, on your game tying uh, three pointer to, to send the game to, to overtime, just what were you guys talking about in the huddle? And was that, was that a design play for, for you to take that final shot? Uh, it, was, it wasn't designed, uh, but Barry made a great pass at the end. I was just creating space on the outside. I, had, I was open, so I just took the shot. I didn't let my pass threes get in my head. I just, they just told me to keep shooting. And then, uh, obviously, uh, tough start for you with the foul trouble. Can you explain a little bit how, how you kept it together? And obviously, you had a big finish, uh, really, on both ends of the floor. Uh, you know, things happen. You know, as you grow older, you know, I'm in my fifth year here in Colorado. You know, uh, I've seen a lot happen. You know, I've seen a lot of games. So for me, just, you know, keep my head, keep my composure, you know, give it, never get too high, never get too low, and just, you know, get ready to get, make an impact. So. Is, it, is it fair to say this was, you know, kind of a, an experienced game for you? Maybe a young Evan Batty doesn't get off the bench and, and contribute down a stretch like that? Maybe. Maybe a young Evan Batty comes in and fouls again. <laughs> but, uh, no, nah, I mean, definitely an experienced game. Keyshawn, as, as the game progressed, did you feel like you were growing in yourself at all as a player? I, I saw, you know, maybe coaches from you, but you, you seemed to be a little bit more aggressive as the game progressed. Uh, yeah, I, w I was looking to be aggressive because they were plugging ball screens, and uh, I just had to make plays for my teammates, and then they, they pulled through for us, so it was good. <clears throat> um, I guess for Evan, like, how important is it for these young guys to get the experience of an overtime close game? Uh, I'm not, I mean, I'm not really sure, but I, I know how important it is for the game one just to, you know, set the tone, you know, for the requirement of the energy, the attitude, the effort that's required to, you know, win games. And that's, that's, a, that's like the cost of entry almost, you know. That's the price of admission. So, you know, I think now we got an insight to what it really takes to, you know, come out and win games. Eli, for you, what sparked the change towards the later part of the game where you guys went from you know, maybe being a little passive to really dictating the terms of the game and start making plays left and right both, on both sides of the floor? Well, they, was getting, they were getting to the line on their end of the court. We wasn't getting to the line. So they were attacking us. We weren't attacking them. So we started attacking more. And then again, on defense, we had to just lock in. If we didn't do that, we weren't going to win the game. So that's really what happened on that. Evan, both in the, the first uh, and the second half, it looked like the they were doing a lot of damage in the low post. There's the back door open in, in that regard. Just what kind of adjustments did you have to make to start taking that away from them? Yeah, we started switching some some stuff and you know, um, just not giving them any advantages. Just with our switches and uh, be, being long and athletic and you know just really making it hard on the passer to see in the post. So I mean, it's an all around effort. <clears throat> Actually, one more question for Eli. Eli, how does it feel to get off of 10 points of your career high? Oh, we got the win, so that's all that matters. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's good the answer, answer I'm looking for. Yes. That's the answer I'm looking for. Y'all have a good day, yes, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good job. All right, we'll be, uh, we'll be a few minutes with Coach just because of the way we did post game. Coach, we're still on the radio, so
appreciate it. Right. Have a good one. Thanks. Good seeing you. Yeah, good to see you too. Yeah, hard fought win. <laughs> I knew it coming in that Montana State is a, they're a good basketball team, a veteran team, and I knew it wasn't going to be easy. Uh, I'm really proud of our players and the fight that they showed. You know, you know it's funny, our, a lot of our guys don't even know the fight song <laughs> at CU. So we sang it in the locker room, had Evan kind of teach him it. So, but the fight part of this team obviously was on display tonight. Um, we weren't great. It was kind of an ugly win, but uh, they showed a lot of grit down the stretch uh, defensively. I, I don't know where that defense was the first 30 minutes that I saw the last 10 minutes, but or eight minutes maybe. Uh, we started switching, you know, their ball screens. I probably should have done that a little earlier, but uh, yeah, great hard-fought win against a really good team. I got a lot of respect for for Montana State and their players and their coaching staff. I mean, Danny Sprinkle's done a he's done a heck of a job putting together a nice, nice team. Okay, questions for Coach? Coach, obviously, uh, probably a lot of stuff you want to get in the film room with your guys about you can go over maybe some of that defense. But as you alluded to, the grit, resiliency, being able to come back in the second half like that, mm -hmm. I imagine all very good signs for a kind of new look team in the first game. I think so. Pat, I, you know, as we, uh, you know, our backs were against the wall. And, you know, I saw a little bit of that uh, in, at, in Nebraska and Lincoln when we got punched in the face. Our guys didn't quit. They didn't go away. But we've just got to understand it's a 40-minute game, and, and there's going to be ebbs and flows. You know, look, Raquan Battle hit a big-time tough three at the end of the uh, halftime, right? It was good defense. And the little kid, you know, hits the, <laughs> hits the deep three. It reminded me of uh, – Texas A&M, my first year, had flashbacks. And as soon as he let it go, I'm like, that looks good. And it went in. And so yeah, those, those shots, I'm not worried about. Like, that doesn't bother me. It's the, it's the ones where we're not guarding the ball or we're hand checking or, you know, they penetrate and kick to a three-point shooter. We, we don't switch. Our switching has got to get better. I mean, we gave up a minimum of 15 points tonight, just in ball screen switches. And you're supposed to switch to take away threes. You're supposed to switch from taking away the roll. We didn't do a good job of that tonight. So there's a lot of things we got to get better at. Guarding the ball, you know, post defense. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that 
Colorado needs to get better at. And our guys understand that, but that's what the film room's for. And, you know, now the games start coming. And so the balance between making sure we're improving and, you know, cleaning up what we learned tonight and getting ready for New Mexico is kind of a, a little bit of a delicate balance because we have to take days off, like we're off tomorrow. We should be because it's late and um, I don't want to get up at 7.30 in the morning and wear these guys out. So they'll get rested tomorrow. We'll, we'll get two days of practice for New Mexico and get after it. Uh, Eli Parquet, coach, played 41 minutes tonight. Yeah. And I know at times in the first half it wasn't exactly what you wanted, but as the game wore on, you, you can kind of tell me, he, he looked really, really good, didn't he? Yeah. He started making some big plays. He did. He did. And Eli, look, Eli and Evan are two seniors. We're going to lean on them a lot. We really are. And I, you know, I don't like how the minutes we, we kind of stayed with with those. Obviously, you know, Lawson filed out. That's tough. But you know, KJ, we got to get him on the floor more. We didn't get Julian out, out there tonight. You know, Luke O'Brien, I thought gave us great minutes. I thought you know the end of the first half, probably the last six to eight minutes, our our guys did our bench did a great job. We didn't finish the half very well, but we got a, like a five four or five point lead. Now it, it dwindled and went away because we didn't finish the half well, but. For the most part, I thought the bench played pretty good there in that first half because we had Tristan with two, Lawson with two, Evan with two. I was getting ready to put, uh, you know, Will Laughlin in our, our our big walk-on, who's a who's a good player. But uh, Luke O'Brien gave us good minutes in that first half. Chad, I asked Eli about his uh, his game time three pointer that sent the, mm -hmm. the game to overtime, and uh, he indicated that, that it wasn't a drawn up play for him to take that shot. Right? Would you have because Jabari had driven. On that on that play, and then decided to pass to Eli. Would you have taken a two? Come, a yeah, foul? coming out of that timeout, I said, okay, it was it was a, it was a play drawn up to a ball screen to get our guard downhill, get Evan roll into the rim, uh, and filling up with a shooter behind the ball screen. And I said, you know, we'll take a quick two, uh, but if we get a wide open three, we'll take that too. We just need to get a great shot. And that position, that possession did not. It was kind of like a broken play, if you will. And Jabari, I thought, made a really, really heads-up uh, play on the drive, kicking it out. And uh, because at that point, you know, there wasn't a lot of time, and, and that was a really astute play on his part. So, you know, I say this all the time: players make plays at the end of the games. Jabari made a great penetrate and kick. Obviously, Eli, you know, relocated was shot ready and knocked the shot down. But those, those two guys did, did, a, did a heck of a job. But I had nothing to do with that. But the, the play originally was designed to get a quick two or a three, whatever came quick. But we wanted to get, get it quick because if we didn't score, we got to uh, get the clock stopped and, and uh, go to the other end. So that got it went to overtime. <laughs> Tab with Evan, uh, you know, Take your leave, but he had the 0 for 10 at Nebraska. Mm -hmm. uh, got in early foul trouble today, but you know he finished a six for six. Uh, had some big rebounds, big plays down the stretch. It's an example of, I guess, a, a senior putting the team, up, you know, a little bit on yeah. his shoulders when it mattered. Absolutely, and Evan, you know the thing I love about Evan, like he didn't let that 0 for 10 thing bother him. He knows what we're looking for you know, in terms of defense and rebounding and toughness and all the things that we stress. The, the over 10s might happen, you know, you, nobody likes it, but he didn't let it phase him. He didn't let it bother his confidence. He got in the gym, he was, he's, you know, I came to shoot around this morning. He was, he had a big lather going at, you know, 8.45 this morning, we shot around at nine and he, he was getting shots up and he just gets in the gym and works and he believes in himself. So he didn't worry about the over 10 and quite frankly, I didn't either. As long as he's taking good shots. Because I know Evans worked on his game, much like Eli has, and a lot of our guys have in the offseason. Nick Clifford, I thought, was terrific tonight. His, the way he rebounded the ball, and he's our best rebounder in practice. I said it before, he's like a sixth starter, and he played starter minutes tonight. So um, really, really good effort, I thought, uh, on his part. Follow up on Nick. Um, what you mentioned, but also when he grabs those rebounds, he really looks to push the pace. Yes. And he had that key sequence late in overtime where he had a block and a steal within a couple of seconds there. Yep. Is that kind of that complete game that you needed to see from Neek last year that he's adding towards, you know, some of that offensive potential we all know he has? Yeah, and, and look, last year wasn't his fault because he didn't get the chance last year. He didn't get the minutes last year. He got the minutes tonight. Um, and, uh, yeah, when he gets a defensive rebound, we want him to push it. And we want, you know, 
KJ or Keyshawn or whoever else on the wing is in there with them to run and and and. Uh, but I want our guards and wings to get rebounds and push it. Um, and Neek is a Neek's a good ball handler and he's a good passer and he's a willing passer. Um, and I thought turnovers were a little issue for us tonight. You know, in the first half we. I really challenged Jabari and Tristan because they had all of them for us in the first half. But in the second half, their teammates helped them out. They had some too. <laughs> but 16 turnovers is too much against a high-quality team like this. The stat line of your new point guard looks a lot like the stat line of your old point guard. Um, you haven't really, I know you've been confident in, in Keyshawn, but I hear from a lot of fans worried about the post-McKinley era. But is this kind of... What do you yeah. expect out of Keyshawn? Yeah, Keyshawn's going to be great. K.J. Simpson's going to be great. Julian Hammond's going to be great. I mean, our point guard position is in good shape. It's just a matter of who can be consistent, and it might be a different guy on a different night. Um, the big thing with – the only thing I get frustrated with with Keyshawn is on the defensive end and rebounding the basketball. The two things that I <laughs> uh, bleed, as you guys know, is that he needs to help. And he tracked down an offensive rebound in the second half, a big one. You know, big time. I mean, we ha we've got to have five guys rebound the ball defensively. And, and uh, Keyshawn's got to be a big – because that's what McKinley did. McKinley was a great rebounding guard. So, um, again, room for improvement. But Ke uh, Keyshawn, I, got, I got confidence in Keyshawn. I got confidence in KJ. And I have confidence in Julian Hammond, even though he didn't play tonight. You know, it's, it's just hard to have a 10-man rotation sometimes. Chad, to your point on the, the turnovers, both Keyshawn and Jabari had their fair share of uh, costly turnovers at different points in regulation, yep. but uh, both of them kind of just kept their heads down and, and ended up making pretty big contributions down the stretch. Does, yep. does that kind of encapsulate the – I know you talk about mental toughness a lot, but is that kind of a prime example of that? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's when, you know, not letting that turnover affect the next play, and I thought they both did a good job of that. Now, obviously – Jabari's got to do a better job taking care of the ball. And, you know, a lot of his were driving and being off balance and not playing off two feet. But, you know, that's, that's an adjustment to Jabari's game that he's going to make this year. And it's going to take time. It's not, it's not like you're just going to snap your fingers and, oh, he's, you know, penetrating like a point guard. But, you know, I think he, he learned tonight. And, and he learned within the game because, you know, that last play he made, he, he, he made a really good kick out. So. Yeah, I, mental toughness is being able to uh, not be at your best, but not let the last play affect the next play. And I thought we did a good job of that tonight. Anything else for Coach? What, what's the key of what you guys are going to work on between now and Saturday? <laughs> let, me, uh, let me get a good night's sleep and uh, <laughs> answer that. I'll answer that question for you on Thursday. Because right now, I'm, I'm exhausted. I really am. I'm sure our players are too. So tomorrow's a good day off that we'll, but I'll meet with our staff in the morning and we'll, we'll, we'll start figuring out, you know, again, finding the balance between learning from tonight in the film room and preparing for New Mexico. And that's what we'll do on Thursday and Friday. Thank you. Thank you.